So if you just want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Eamon Riley. Um, I'm an artist. I suppose some people could call me a pro-life artist, but uh, I do a lot more than that too. And uh, just kind of social justice, real social justice, uh, I'm interested in. <laughs> and you're from Mullingar? From Fene. Fene. Uh, not too far from Mullingar, yeah. yeah. 20, and 20 miles away. And what's it like to live in? Fene, it's a rural Ireland, it's grand. Um, the, the, the writer Dermot Healy came from Fene originally and uh, he died there a few years ago. Okay. But he actually launched one of my exhibitions a couple of years before he died, so it was a great honour. Okay, and that must help your uh, art, like it's imagine solitude and country life. Oh, definitely, yeah, that's for sure, yeah. yeah. And you've Loch Sheelan and four Loch nearby. Loch beside me there, yeah, and uh, Finney itself is a historical place, like, and um, we're actually on the border between Ulster and Leinster and Cavan and Westmead, and maybe right the Westmead side, but um, Cavan is just across the border, across the bridge of Finney. And um, yeah, it's an interesting place to live. I mean, yeah. We're not too far from Mead there, we're not too far from Longford there. We're in several counties within so a few, few miles of us. Yeah. So it's the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, kind of everywhere, in the middle of everywhere. Actually. Yeah, the Bridge of Fene. Yeah. There's some history about that. Isn't there was, yeah, there was a battle on the Bridge of Fene years ago, and uh, well, it's hundreds of years ago. And the Miles the Slasher already, I don't think he's any uh, relation. He uh, was defending one crouch side against the other, and there's a big history to it. Okay. A few hundred years old. Okay, and what got you into art? Um, I well, loved it in school, and then in secondary school, the secondary school I went to, they didn't do it anymore, so I didn't do it at all at the time, but this is now early 1980s, and uh, there was no art there at all, so kind of put it on the back burner for years and years and years, and then in my 30s then I started at it again, just, oh, I always had a kind of an interest in it, but I just never got around to it, I got back to it then, so. Okay, and when you're, what's the creative process for you, do you, do you sometimes it's just an idea to come into your head and you kind of be thinking over for a few weeks and that and then eventually and it does never goes out of your head again like you just you just have to get down on canvas and that sort of thing so until you do then it's in your head and okay. you get out on canvas then the next next idea comes along at the moment i'm doing i actually do my fourth one about this whole covid pandemic thing mm. and uh, its effect on people and that so okay. i did three already on that team and the next one i'm in the middle process of doing another one at the moment okay and uh, it's, it's almost there now. No so, so you, so you pick teams then. Yeah, something that's an enemy or whatever, or just in in. Uh, I kind of I feel like I'm kind of compulsed to do them, like. Okay, and um, yeah. So yeah, I was going to ask one of my questions. You have a political slant to it. Have you had you always a political sta- slant? Not really. No, like an awful lot of people. Uh, I was uh, kind of uh, apathetic to everything. Like an awful lot of people in Ireland, I suppose. And uh, when I was young, when in the nineteen eighties, like. I'm 52 years of age when I was really young and that whole abortion thing was going on. I was in my very early teens and didn't pass much remarks on it all at the time. But only in recent years then, uh, well, I suppose with 10, 15 years ago, I started getting back into it again and that, you know. But mm. uh, I was like an awful lot of people in the country. And in fact, there's a lot of people still apathetic about it all and just go by whatever RTE tells them and the Irish media tells them and uh, kind of trying to fight that a bit, get people to think for themselves and to yeah. see beyond to see beyond the Irish media. And do you think art is a good form for um, getting people to be it's aware a, of things? It's a great therapy. It's a brilliant therapy for the person doing it. And, okay. that thing. and then it's a great, yeah, it's great for making a statement and it's there forever then afterwards too. So you can see Picasso years ago, he did Guernica. Yeah. And all these iconic, and they're still there years later and they tell the story of what was happening in his time and that. So, it's probably kind of like uh, making a mark in history. Or... Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so I mean, what what has been the reaction then? Um, I did a few. Uh, I did a few about um, in two thousand and eighteen. We legalised abortion, and uh, a lot of people who sleep walk into that too. They thought they were voting for care and compassion, and no matter what we were telling them, they weren't getting it because the media were telling them something else. So eventually, when they did. Uh, abortion was legalised and uh, they took to the streets to celebrate so I did a couple of works on that <laughs> on the team of that so I kind of, that's kind of immortalised there Yeah, and, and what about uh, the people in, in Westmead or Fene, like that, the, how did they find your art today? Um, it hasn't been always political, I kind of do uh, a, yeah. bit, a bit of everything but yeah, um, I don't know did, I you, be, did it say this the artist when they're walking by your not house? Not really, I wouldn't think so <laughs> No, you'd never get a big head around out in the country. Say that, yeah. <laughs> it was just a, 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good. <laughs> so how? When, so you, as you said, when you have an idea, then and you want, you want. How long is the process then of getting it down? Sometimes you just have to do it. Uh, keep at it until you have it done because uh, it's kind of um, you're not happy until you have it done and that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And do you do you go over it and over it and over it like? No, not really. No. It's just one. You can you think about it for ages and ages and ages and then you do it in, in no time. Then eventually, you know, when you do start it. Yeah. Okay. And are you always some? There must be some times when you're not happy with a piece, and you just oh, you would be sometimes, yeah, definitely. What do you do with them? Throw them out? <laughs> yeah. Just keep keep at them. And don't, I don't even throw them out because uh, what might seem like a bad idea today, and maybe then sometimes I do something, and I don't think it's much good at all, and everybody loves it. Yeah, and yeah. Then sometimes I do something, and I think it's grand, and nobody likes it. Yeah. So, yeah. I heard Slash from Guns and Roses at uh, the same thing. He'd make a song. He think it was brilliant. Yeah. No one had else would take much of it, and he'd have another one. Like Sweet Child of Mine, he thought it was nothing. Yeah, funny. And the next thing, yeah, everyone loved that, and he couldn't understand it at all. Yeah, well, I suppose with art, if, if you're going in one direction, you could change it into something different yeah, in yeah. the process, couldn't you? Yeah, well, I always think no matter how bad it is, it's making a statement from that time that yeah. you were, uh, you know. So, is it is it expensive to be an artist? It's very expensive. The, the paints I use are uh, Winsor and Newton artists mm -hmm. because I find anything else is weak and watery and yeah. these are very strong poster colour type of, um, okay. very strong and uh, you just, they became very, very expensive in the last few years, yeah. extremely expensive and I've tried using cheaper ones and they're just not the same so it's not quite expensive. Are you able to get well stocked up and finished? It's, it's not even about the money, it's just about... <laughs> You're not happy until you say these things and you put them out there and then at least you've made your statement. Yeah. It's not even about selling this. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just about it's something you feel you have to do. Make your mark. Some writers probably write a book about stuff and that book is there then and that's it to move yeah. on and write the next one or whatever. Yeah. But it's the same with a paint, painting too, you know. Yeah. I suppose like when people say maybe artists should be helped by with the government. They should be given tax breaks and stuff. Um um, I don't know how that's gonna. They, they don't want that at the moment. No, they? well, they do a kind of in a way. No? But, uh, you, 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 there's a lot of starving artists. Yeah, it's the same as comedians now and music artists. <laughs> everything you know, they're all in the one boat now, yeah. especially in the last couple of years, last year and a half. So yeah, but I suppose you'd have to be towing the line politically, maybe to. That's the thing too. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then you have to remember you're countercultural. You're going against the whole yeah. grain, and, and uh, an awful lot of musicians and that to just go with the grain. They don't. The only ones at the moment who are really rebels are, we'd say Johnny Rotten is probably still a rebel. He supports Trump still. Um, you have people like that, like uh, Noel Gallagher, yeah. uh, Liam Gallagher actually, Liam Gallagher, and a few of them, Van Morrison and Eric Clapton. But they're the exceptions. Mm. Most of them just toe the line, jump on the bandwagon, whatever bandwagon's going. And yeah. Hosier is at at the moment, and yeah, but well, he's kind of pro-establishment all the way. Yeah, but sure, look at his background. Like he went to a very elite school, didn't he? And that's just right, yeah. along the line, it's the same. Um, he's, just, he's just Andrew Bourne to me because his mother's maiden name was Hosier, so he decided to take that as an unusual name. So he's yeah. known as Hosier, but he's just Andrew Bourne to me. <laughs> I don't know anything about him. He looks like <laughs> uh, the way only he, he uh, campaigned for abortion in yeah. Ireland. And it's very hard to forgive anyone who done that, who used their fame from something else to campaign. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's like just... you know, someone could say I'm making a statement, but I wasn't famous before I started doing this, and I'm still not famous. Yeah. And probably never will be famous. But I'm not that I'm worried about. It. But if I was, I wouldn't start using my fame to push for something just because everyone else was pushing. Yeah, it. it should be part of the process of I, what and you're I doing. I did a couple and... of works just. Uh, a chronicle and everybody who had jumped on that bandwagon, so yeah. three pieces of that, all the people, and so that's there for eternity, too. Yeah, and they know they've done it, and they're down on the record as having done yeah. it. Yeah, well, that's one of the things with the abortion referendum and the, the, um, the gay marriage thing that I didn't sit right with me is that, like, uh, sometimes you have to be, you should be apolitical when you're in certain, like especially when you're in the media or, yeah, yeah. and if you've never talked about these issues before, then why are you like there were sports yeah. people bringing it you, up? You like, two, and, you two for years, you two just uh, sat on the fence and never spoke about abortion while it was fashionable to be pro-life. When everyone voted in 1983 for the Eighth Amendment, you two were quiet, quiet, quiet even up to the very day of the referendum, and on the morning of the referendum, you two put up 
a big repeal the yes sign. That Mazer actually plagiarised from the Avonmore label. I don't care. It's saved. He plagiarised that mm. repeal the yes. Yeah. The red and blue. That's the Avonmore sign. Anyone going on the road, any glory you see on the road with that, you know where that's where it came from. The white writing slanted. Yeah. On a blue disc. Yeah. On the red background. Yeah. That's uh, Avonmore. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, you two put that up on their. Yeah. On the day of the vote, not before it, and uh, lo he lost a lot of fans, lost me too. I was at U2, let's say, a couple of dozen times, bought every album from since 19... Started up in 79, probably shortly after that. I was only a young fella that bought yeah. albums. Every album they ever had. Seen them several times in England and everything. And just uh, uh, no more. Yeah. No. Well, they started off kind of as a Christian. They had a lot of Christian right, kind of yeah. mu music in the gospel yeah. kind of stuff. Like, yeah. How did they turn from that? Ah, oh, well, that's the, in then, the industry, isn't it? Yeah, really? but then you used to remember um, the devil started off in heaven as well. <laughs> and he, he fell from grace. He fell from grace. Yeah, but for for the first thing, like there was even like um, mild sports reporters, like an RT doing a soccer, and they were coming out. Yeah, Richard, Richard Sadler, yeah. and yeah. The, even the guy that I, I used to like him he, he presented the show I can't remember his name he was fairly mild and nice yeah, yeah. I mean you're it's not your place to be exactly. doing that as, as Candace Owens e says, either way either way yeah, like Candace Owens uh, she's a hero of mine anyway yeah. she says um, we don't want to hear your opinions you're you're entertainers yeah. you're sports people that's what you do we don't want to hear your opinion yeah. it means nothing to us yeah. well, that, for me that goes both ways like yeah, I mean you had the yeah. Tyrone manager coming up uh, he's pro-life as well I mean it goes both ways well, it's very very few yeah he was uh, actually one of the brave ones because he was going against the grid. Yeah, the rest yeah. of us were jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, but it, it, it's not just. Uh, I think for both sides, if you, it should, like, it used to be like that years ago where it it, it was considered rude yeah. to give your political you opinions. After the referendum on Nice and that. And yeah. You remember we voted the wrong way, the wrong way. Yeah. And we had to vote the wrong footballers in. Yeah, Robbie Keane. Like, yeah. I like I met Robbie Keane. Like, yeah. he's a nice guy, but. He's he can he's, he can barely string a sentence together, you know. <laughs> That's true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I brought all them into uh, and the GS people and everything. I brought all them into. Oh come on, everybody yeah, vote yeah. right with this next time. So right? that was probably the first time they brought they mm. used it. Yeah, yeah. I, you've been shown in some galleries in the yeah, in Midlands, I, I think. A few times, and I've been in Belgium stuff. The one I was talking about, Dermot Healy uh, launching, that was in Belgium stuff, which isn't that far from me. It's in County Cavan a, okay. few, a few years ago, and uh, in 2012 actually. Yeah, that was very memorable because. Like yeah, I got there, and he, he lived in Fay, and he knew some of my relatives and that. So we okay. got him to launch it, which was amazing. Like that's yeah. he is one of the biggest heroes in the country, one of the best yeah. writers, the most famous writer, the world writer, famous writers in the country. Yeah. So he went and done it, and I was delighted he done it. And about two years later, he just died all of a sudden. Okay. Suddenly, and that yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. This. Um, what about your mood when you're doing the art? Um, oh, I guess it's brilliant. It's, it's yeah. brilliant. Uh, yeah. See, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs, don't do anything. But while you're doing art, you're just, it's, uh, okay. you're in the zone, you're kind of get flow, especially, sometimes you do anyway, but when you get flow, it's brilliant. Like yeah. You're just, you're, and you even forget, when you're doing your... You forget everything else, but then you, you can be listening to music while you're doing it. Okay. And it's brilliant, yeah. Or you can even listen to podcasts, or yeah. you listen to John Waters talking, and it's very entertaining. <laughs> and, uh, okay. It's brilliant, yeah, you can do... Would that not set you off, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> You'd no. be like, ah! <laughs> no, no, well, that's going to help too, yeah. yeah. That's going to help, yeah, yeah. Okay. Broad Give you the brush break. strokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and do you make the art? Do you have a gallery or a studio? Or I just uh, work out of a bedroom at home now. I'm okay. just a hum humble guy. Nothing yeah. like that. I don't even know whether I, if I was rich, I'd do that either. But yeah. It's pretty. pretty yeah, I don't Jack, know. Jack White had a song about a little room and. Uh, he started, you know, this, he starts off in the little room and he done all his writing from all that, and then he gets a bigger room and then he goes back to the little room again. <laughs> that's, that was the best place to do it all. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen my video on Emmanuel Godson. Like he he does his art from a shed in the back garden. Like you know, it's yeah, the same. Yeah. And he's some fabulous pieces. Um, I know you're on Deviant Art, but they're they're prints, but. Do you sell paintings oh, themselves, do, yeah, sir? Yeah, you only do. Yeah, I, I do. I send the originals as well. A lot of them that are on even art are the originals are sold. Well, some of them anyway. Just through the website, is it? No, just through myself. Oh no, okay. <laughs> through, through exhibitions and that sort of thing. Well, I have my own website, but it's it's in in repair at the moment. Yeah. There's work being done on it. So how much? Uh, like the, the, the deviant art is the most uh, 
that was actually if it hadn't been for Deviant Art, I wouldn't even be still doing it probably today. Okay. It's kind of it's a great website. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's, yeah. it's not expensive. Okay. It's worldwide. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's a lot of good things about it. Yeah. Brilliant. I was going to say, what's the art scene like in the Midlands? Yeah, it's not bad. The Mulling- art centre there in Mullingar is pretty good. Though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's pretty good. That it, well, it was up to lately. Now it's yeah. just everything's after falling apart, isn't it? Like when you think about it. Yeah. I noticed they always had something for Christmas, didn't they, in the front there. But... That's right, yeah. The art centre is actually a great place, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And the, it's an exhibition place out the back, and, or in the foyer of the, uh, of the County Council offices in Mullingar. And that's a good spot too, yeah. The, I suppose it's a good place to be an artist because, I mean, you have all the lakes. And I, love, I love Mullingar. I was yeah. born in Mullingar and as I always say, in about 40 years' time, I'll die in Mullingar. <laughs> I do, I love Mullingar, I have yeah. to say. Even though I love Fenea now too. And I, yeah. I'll always be a Fenea man, but I do love Mullingar. It's my favourite town and I've been in lots of towns. Yeah. But, I mean, you do a lot of um, art with... Uh, wildlife and, and oh, yeah. picturesque scene yeah. so it's a perfect place I think the Midlands oh, oh it is yeah we're beside Loch Sheelan there now as well and Mullameen and all that yeah yeah Derivar and Loch Goul and all those lakes the bridge of near self and the uni I've painted yeah. them too and yeah, yeah and every animal alive is, I've seen foxes around my house and everything pine martens yeah any animal you can at different times <laughs> hares rabbits um do do as an artist, do you do you think you have a different personality uh, set than other? Yeah, totally different. Yeah, just uh, what? It's like... a different way of than everyone else. So <laughs> definitely, yeah. I always was, even if I wasn't an artist, I was always in a different way of than everyone else. Okay. The things that would interest people, like people, a, a, a career in finance or something like that, would interest in people. That not not a chance would I go near it. I'm allergic to numbers. <laughs> yeah. Well, what like the, um with the modern art scene then it's a bit pretentious yeah, isn't it? It is a bit pretentious sorry, yeah, yeah. But it's more like you Tracy Emin and Damon Hurst and all yeah, these guys. Shock, the shock stuff, yeah. yeah. Damon Hurst has some good stuff now, out in out in Quatar. Yeah. How he, he I don't think he does anything himself, I think he gets it all commissioned. Yeah. Out like, in Quatar, did you see that? He has uh, these big statues of every stage of conception from Okay. The start up to the baby born. Like yeah. That. It's just a big, oh, massive, okay. huge, huge monuments. We're 12 of them, I think it is. And it was just the talk of the world when they were launched okay. in Qatar, yeah. But so, yeah, but he would have people working for him as he, well. That's what he it? had. Well, then Andy Warhol had too. Andy Warhol had hardly done anything himself either. But, yeah. Uh, he had, a, he had a, a team in the place. I think that's what Damien Hirsch was at too. I'm not sure. More powers on us. I suppose. He yeah, could. Would. He could argue. He has the creative yeah, <laughs> idea. Yeah. Let yeah, someone else put it. More power to him if he you need to get an apprentice down at Finney. Yeah, he never does another thing in his life that um, that work is really the work in Quatar is just brilliant. Okay, it's his. I'd say his Michael or his Michelangelo. You know. Okay. He's got his star statue of David. I suppose really. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. When I was in London, I went to the the Modern Art Museum. What do you call it? The one there. Um, you know the one. Oh, I've been uh, yeah. Uh, the cross the, the the bridge. Ah. Uh, the Tate? No. Yeah, the Tate Gallery. Yeah. 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 I remember seeing that the Chinese guy. What's his name? We is it? Uh, I, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was a rebel artist. Yeah, brave man. Yeah, but he had he had that one where um, the sunflower seeds and yeah. the whole room was packed with sunflower seeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, I think in each sunflower there was a specific uh, Chinese symbol yeah. representing Orange, the people yeah. that died in the Sichuan earthquake. Yeah. So when you know, I guess like on one level it just looks ridiculous, but yeah. then when you know the story and it's, true, it's, yeah. Meant to, yeah. it's meant to represent all the people, that's why there were so many. That's true. And Chinese people love sunflower seeds, so yeah. you know, but. But I mean, there was. I did see one in the takeout. There was a chair, but I wasn't sure if that was a chair that was just sitting there. Put, someone put it there and <laughs> forgot to take it away. Or I remember one time we were, in, uh, we were in New York, as a few of us, and uh, we were walking around the anyway, and you know, everyone's really pretentious there. And we, we put down the hair. And some of the girls that was with us had a hair task, and she put it behind one of the numbers, and we all stood, stood looking at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have not. Because there's bogs, the bogs in Westmead, isn't there? Like maybe do some bog art. Oh, that's bog art for me, yeah. yeah that's it. But the funny thing is, the bog people think, oh, sure, don't put everything in the bog. Like the bog is only a bog. Like bog is just as good as the desert, or as good as any other landscape. Place. Yeah. They're beautiful bogs, like they're yeah. And then people just dump in them, and then they think, oh, it's okay. We'll throw a lock of wind turbines into them. Yeah. 
they're still a beautiful spot. They're kind of a natural. They're there are thousands of years. The bogs are actually made out of trees that fell down millions of years yeah. ago and kept falling on top of each other. And well, you can't have real bog art with the the old timber that just be under the thing, don't right. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so your work is very much um, pro life, and you know would be a bit anti establishment. Or, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. So is it, do you get blacklisted because of that? Oh, you would all the time, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure you'd be banned off Twitter sometimes, or you know, or Facebook for just for telling the truth or that. Especially pro life people before the abortion referendum, Facebook banned pro life ads. Mm. which is crazy stuff when you think about it. And it's actually, that was just the start of it all. And we can see in the last few days how it's all yeah. ended up, whether it'll end up like that now or not. Or yeah. And what about like with locally, like with local um, exhibition, expi- expi- expeditions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with local Let's exhibitions see. and that. Sure. I just stick to the, you know, what would you call it, the tra- traditional landscapes and stuff like okay. that. But, but I had a couple actually in my hometown there in 2009 and 10 and I had the stuff thrown in, put into that too, like political stuff too. Okay. Yeah. But okay. I'd say if you were, they had no money in Dara, doesn't really want controversial stuff. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's up to them too. Sure yeah. Well, I suppose you have to play your audience sometimes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. And that goes back to what we were saying, like it's good manners not to always push. You oh, know, yeah, it's true too. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, there's not uh, actually. Um, I used to get an art magazine, or, or I think it was four times a year. Uh, Irish Artists Review. I used to get it for years, and then one day I got. Or I got seen it in the shops. I didn't get it. I seen it in the shops, and Mazers uh, repealed yeah, yeah, the yeah. front of it. And that was it. Never, well, never got it again. It was funny that I told them that at the same time. Never again. Yeah. For years that again. They wouldn't put in a pro-life one that exactly for ballast, not a chance. Well, that was one of my questions because RT constantly have even they do have an anniversary thing and of all the artists, but they're all the pro the pro abortion side. Like even they don't care about objectivity. Yeah, you know. No. Well, there's water for whisperers now, and they're cowards. cowards. Yeah. Colin Williamson, such a coward. You go online and Google uh, Waterford Whispers abortion. Yeah. And you see about 10, 10, you know, because it's a satire website, 10 articles all uh, mocking pro life people in, in the run up to the referendum for a couple of years before the referendum at all. Yeah. Mocking them all away. Just cowardly. Yeah, well, it's funny they, they set themselves up as anti establishment, taking the piss out of the establishment. Sure, they work for RT now. They're so. part of the establishment. It's yes. like any of them, like um, Rubber Bandits and Tommy Ternan. They always cowards. play, they always play that they're cowards. some. They blocked me on Twitter years ago. They're just pure cowards. But they always play that they're some kind of uh, rebels or something, again, yeah. rallying against far the far system. Far from it. They're actually. You know? Uh, public school boys or actually the, the degrees and everything oh yeah yeah push it. boys oh, it's always push boys yeah, it's all yeah. you know they're not nothing. even hoes you're there yeah, yeah definitely yeah there's no real working class here for us anyway <laughs> Morrissey maybe Morrissey's great actually he's, he's one and, and Liam Gallagher and and there's a few there's still a few giant, giant rock. right side Fred which is very yeah, yeah, they're yeah, yeah. too yeah well they're cool guys they're yeah, nice guys yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And even Johnny Rotten to yeah. support Trump and all the rest for giving out of it. Yeah, him. well, he's he's always remained true to his roots, he you does, know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's Radio Nova too, like, and they play great music. And the thing about rock and roll is it's supposed to be rebellion. Yeah, and they're as part of the establishment as anything. Yeah. They just take the establishment line on everything. And yeah. even they must have an awful job trying to ignore Van Morrison now and uh, Eric Clapton. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and even the Sex Pistols and all of them. Well, I'm looking at like your Van Morrison, Eric Clapton, um, Johnny Rotten, and then you see Paul McCartney. Jesus Christ, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's he's trying to get be down with the young crowd, you know, That's like right, yeah, just yeah. like. You but you two have just definitely sold out, and even Bruce Springsteen sold out. I was the biggest fan of Bruce Springsteen as it was. You too. And then in the last few years, he just, I don't know. Yeah. The guy just jumps on every bandwagon going. Yeah, well, it's a lot of it's to stay in power, isn't it? And stay, with, be, stay yeah. with the flow. He supported abortion too. He he actually, he's such the biggest hypocrite. He said that it's not too good to get too close to the seat of power, he said about Obama. Like he helped Obama get in, well, so he taught on you, in the first year, in the first term. And then the second term, he says, oh, it's not too good to get so clo- too close to the seat of power. And then he goes and does it anyway, and then and a convinced for Obama again yeah. a second time. And then told warned everyone that if you don't vote for Obama, Planned Parenthood, who are big abortion providers in America, they'll be in trouble. And 
women won't be able to have a bar yeah. in the into room so yeah that was him gone too like, just never could like Bruce Springsteen after that again and yeah then, of course he's on Radio Nova now I'm Bruce Springsteen yeah. so, you know this I don't know but yeah so this um, with him yeah it is kind of hard to follow artists when you know I mean like even, even Christy Moore and things oh, like that. Oh, Christy Moore. So talking about disappointment. Yeah. But to be fair, he was he he was from the seventies, pretty pro abortion So I mean, That's true, you have yeah. to be kind of yeah. fair. At least he didn't jump That's on true. a bandwagon. Um, but. Uh, but it's funny how you can pretend to uh, write about Anne Lovett and all these things. And that's another thing too. Anne Lovett's death was absolutely nothing got to do with abortion. Like I live in Vinay there. We're five miles from Granard. I went to school. Yeah. The same school as Anne Lovett and her sister. And her death was absolutely nothing got to do with abortion. And Christy Burr wrote a song about her when she died. And everyone tried to turn it into it. Actually, Anne Lovett died um, the year after the abortion referendum. She died okay. in 1984 and the abortion referendum was in 1983. The media were smart and after being bet that time and they were looking for something to jump yeah. onto and they jumped onto that at the time. But, uh, so what was the story that she she died from miscarriage or something, wasn't um, it? Or, or what? She was pregnant and people didn't know and uh, I was in school at the time and they were told, if, if she hadn't told somebody she would have been helped. Okay. She was afraid at the time, just yeah. the times they were in it and that. Yeah. Absolutely nothing got to do with abortion whatsoever. Yeah. And just, uh, and uh, even the Irish Times and... Uh, a few of them Irish Times people just turned it into a big circus around the, up before the referendum, trying to pretend that it was something got to do with it. Like, and yeah, it's just, uh, oh, I couldn't, I was raging, and so on. I'd say everybody in Cranor was raging too, just okay, yeah, tightening up poor Anne Love's name after all these years, and yeah, no regard for the family or anything. Yeah, well, it's not nice when they pick an, an incident and just blow it up and they don't think of the family and yeah, stuff, and you know. Yeah, and the woman who done it, her name escapes me at the moment, and she got awards for her journalism. Journalism. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I was just raging with that. Um, so, who inspires you as an artist, then? And who's um, your favourite artist? I like the way Picasso, uh, just, he didn't give a damn. He didn't give a damn. Actually, yeah, yeah he was brilliant. And Van Gogh, I like that. Uh, them two guys... Yeah. And Goff, he just it was brilliant. He just yeah. painted the way, and he didn't care. And he only sold one painting in his yeah. lifetime to say. But he knew when he was doing it. He knew that it would be. Yeah. And his brother actually, his brother deserves as much praise as he does. Okay. Like he never would have been able to keep doing it without his brother. His brother financed it, all this art. Then mind, minded all his paintings and all this. And sadly, the both of them died about a year apart from each other. He died at thirty-seven years of age, and the year after that, his brother died as well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, them two guys, yeah. And what, what do you get from them? What's Well, Van Gogh's art is just brilliant. And, uh, you know, it's just something about it. It's just kind of uh, just jumps off the page at you. Okay. Um, and then Picasso, too. Like, he, he's... Uh, well, the one thing I can't understand is how he done so many works in his lifetime. I know he lived to 93. But I reckon he had tens and tens of thousands of <laughs> artworks. Not just paintings, sculptures. Everything done with everything you can imagine. Are you happy at the moment with where your art is, or are you striving yeah. for? Uh, sure, yeah, greater? Sure. you just keep uh, going with the flow. So <laughs> well, that's it. Too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hopefully I'll be like Picasso. I'm still at eighty-three. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite piece amongst all your work? Um, probably, and this is a funny one. Uh, it's still for sale too. It's the heron flying across the the Loch Sheelan. Okay. So that's actually uh, I got a photo. I found a photo of Loch Sheelan and uh, a kind of superimposed a, a heron flying over it. You know, and kind of I like that one. That's I don't know what it is. It's me maybe flying over me problems or something like that. Maybe but I like it. <laughs> okay. And it's one of the most basic ones I've ever done. Another one is the. The couple have done kind of mocking the people celebrating abortion. Now. Yeah. Perhaps they are pretty proud of them. Well, that's a memorable one, I think. Yeah, it pretty stands proud of them. Out. One of them was inspired by David McWilliams. Book, yeah. And I kind of took the piss out of David McWilliams. Imagine the year after abortion, or the same year as abortion was introduced into Ireland, he puts a book about Ireland's, what was it called? Renaissance Nation. About Renaissance, you know, uh, starting to kill your own babies in the room, and that's supposed to be a Renaissance. So I changed it to Abortion Nation. Yeah. And uh, I said, and he uh, he had a byline on it, and I changed the byline to How the Pope's Children Brought Ireland's Auschwitz. I have a good few, actually, it is Ireland's Auschwitz, and I have a good few patents on that team and that, I yeah. on that team yeah. of Ireland's Auschwitz, which it is, because there's a great article online if, you're, if you ever see it. Um, 
how um, my trip to Auschwitz reminded me why I'm pro life, which is brilliant. Like, it's a okay, it can be got easily enough online. Okay, so it's kind of inspiring. Well, it's kind of funny that they're all talking about babies and septic tanks at the moment. Or oh, this thing, yeah, you know, like in 2019 alone, and there'll be a lot more next year, or in 2020, I'd say. In 2019 alone, 6,666 babies were killed in the womb in Ireland. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Well, it's funny because I don't know what the point of this because we've already done this story at least three times now. Yeah. This, oh, I don't um, know the point of it. Magdalene, it's just trying to, laundry yeah. and... But the funny thing is, uh, that's what the June Babies report came out. At least we, this time around we have gripped media to tell the truth. The truth that no Irish journalists with well, mention and they have actually an article out now what, uh, what this new report tells us about the nuns <laughs> and it uh, actually is brilliant um, it, it, an awful lot of myths were just blown out of the water like, you know? yeah. well, so, yeah. well, I, saw, I saw the village magazine trying to um, rage him with that rage that the truth came out and I think he nearly wanted them to make I don't know who he is to be honest with you I think he nearly wanted them to make up stuff yeah. Just to kind of to please the online online Twitter catalophobic mob. Yeah. You know? Well, I think it's a society thing, you know. I oh, mean, it's a society thing, definitely. Yeah, but that's what they did say. It wasn't even a Catholic thing. They yeah. Were the, they were in the Netherlands. They were in England and everything. I mean, the, I think the government probably there's some vaccinations there as well, isn't there? Don't yeah, that's the funny part of it. Yeah, there, there was kind of a state forced vaccination or something. Yeah, the motion. but it's, it's just like what's happening now. And shipping them off to America as well, yeah. weren't they? Like it's adoption and stuff for, really for rich Americans. But um, well, that was kind of a yeah, and then as well as that, another one of the myths was uh, that grip busted was uh, that the nuns were benefiting from it uh, financially, which they weren't doing. Like at all. Yeah, it's very good actually. That's a grip yeah. article, but you won't see anything about that on RT news. Well, it's funny, like. I don't really look at RT anyway, but mm. I just, oh, I you know, just you know, you hear just, some... Uh, we're paying for it, so everyone should look at it and just tear it apart. <laughs> tear it into a thousand pieces. Oh, I'd go mad if I had to listen to it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, I'm just kind of a labour of love. But, but a Joe Duffy was on about it, like, and Joe Duffy didn't break any story in his life, did he? Not at all, no. You know? <laughs> Jumped on every bandwagon going on. Yeah. I can't remember, he's talking about, like, so, like he would have been around in the early 80s, I don't remember him. Oh, he was one stuff. of these, um, he would have been the kind of like, what do you, the, the labour crowd, like Rory Quinn and them. Yeah, but I, a, I don't uh, remember him breaking any story about uh, children and babies and septic tanks or no, any of this shit. No, no. But it's just, uh, my point with that is, it's just, it's on a loop now. Um, I'm supposed I'm going to hear about this story again in another 10 years. Oh, yeah. Well, that's for sure, yeah. yeah. E- even though the report, they're still giving out about this report. Mac and report they were giving out about it didn't, wasn't hard enough on, on the Catholic Church. This one, they're saying the same thing. What they don't realise is the whole, it was all based, based on a faulty premise that went around the world. Yeah. And I told on purpose. Yeah. Well, just to cause a bit of a, you know, to, to, to shine a spotlight on us. And the, uh, it was it was that 900 babies were, actually the, what it was, what it actually were suggested was that 900 babies were killed by nuns, cruel nuns, killed them and threw them into a septic tank. And if you go onto Twitter or anywhere on Twitter and put in nuns kill babies, you'll find hundreds of people actually think that nuns kill babies. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Um, let me bring it back, let me see. <laughs> so if, um, if people wanted to follow your work, I mean, you have the Deviant Art website. That's right, yeah, yeah. Page. Is there any other way they can go about following? Oh, eventually I'll have, I'll, I'll be getting my website back up again. It's under repair at the moment. <laughs> and what's that? That's... It's emilreilly.com. A- a- okay. I just have a few f- photos. I wonder if you could want maybe give a quick talk about them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can get them here. Delighted with that. That's the COVID one. That's the COVID one. One of the first ones I've done. Yeah, yeah. That was about. Um, actually, there's a lot of stuff in that about um, you know a kind of a conflict in information and all this. This was the early days of it, like conflict in information and you know all that. And all the names on the thing is just the. Oh, that's just a different day. Uh, oh, what they be telling you how to do wash your hands, so that, uh, all these instructions okay. are, are constantly on. What do you think of the COVID thing? Yeah, it's very hard to know what to make of it. I know it's a real thing, probably. And, um, yeah, but the flu is real. Yeah, so. exactly. The flu has disappeared now. The flu doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. It just disappeared off the face of the earth. Well, it's over, hasn't it? This for the first time in humanity, the flu has completely disappeared. This is a sex stop version flu. <laughs> 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 we never seen together at the same time. So that was, their, I, I think that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Together for yeah. death. Actually, we got the actual photo of them and just took all their skin off and made them, showed them the way they actually are. Yeah. Well, that real photo, 
I mean, that's a, iconic for both sides, yeah, really, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. But they, they, they'll never see that. They can't see how bad it is. Like, yeah. They think it's great. Well, that young girl... I've been in Argentina lately. Don't the exact same thing. Yeah. Well, that young girl, she's immortalised, isn't she? I think she's, someone said she's Australian. Yeah. She could have been just in for the day there. Yeah. In for the photo. Could be well, well rehearsed that. Yeah, but... Like... I wouldn't like to be immortalised for that. Imagine Granny... Well, it's not to celebrate, even yeah. whatever. Like, it's one of those things, even if you pro abortion it's not it's it's always a difficult thing oh, sure, for a the morning, woman the morning the uh, morning before the one uh brad just said that they wouldn't be celebrating i know yeah, they, were like, like, they just can't help themselves no. and what the you put painted ireland in red yeah blood ireland power it's a kind of like a blood a blood uh, what would you call it puddle of blood a list of the damned yeah and that's nearly everybody who caused that that's one of three i've done three the third one i've done was stars with blood on their hands yeah and, uh, Two hands, two bloody hands. Yeah, Dermot Bannon, I remember that one. Like, he's a fucking idiot. Anyway. Jumping on that bandwagon, yeah. How, I mean, he's basically, his whole show is a copy of the one on Channel 4. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is, yeah. <laughs> I imagine jumping on the bandwagon at the very end, yeah. And, and even um, Harding, very disappointing. Michael Harding, very disappointing. Oh, who's he? He's, in, no, he's a writer there from Leitrim. Okay. He, he would have, he'd have Calvin connections. What's one too. name I was surprised? Um, oh, they're all, all surprised me. I couldn't believe it. I just I'm not a mechanic. It's a flip at the bank. You have Nestle on it and some companies. What what was that? Oh, should they jumped on it too? They were celebrating um, after eights. Okay. Yeah, after eights. Okay. They had an ad next day. We're going to send Iron a lot, a lot of after eights, as if it was a great thing that the eight entrance was gone. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm still bicycling, but Jeanette, by the way. Okay. I, I'm going to bycott anybody who just... You must have um, get a lot GoPro. of companies. Get wo- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get Woke GoPro. Mm. Um, and there's the Ireland again. Yeah, and another one of uh, the North as well. Yeah. yeah. When, they, when they're done as well. Yeah. Now, these are the ones I like. Yeah, that's the Our Lady of Guadalupe kind of. I yeah, so I've, two, I've two of them, actually. Yeah. Them. I did two together at the same time. I often do two together. One and one is just... Uh, that's Change the universe. Yeah, it's clever. I'm like, for something like that. Right? It's, how, it's, how, it's, how, it's, it's a word idea. It's a word of a song too. How did you get that idea? Just looking just at the stars. Me, just give it to me, head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's a word of a song. You're a child of the universe. That's one for the new year. I like that one. I've one of them. I saw a two like that. One. That's a Malik Mean, isn't it? That's one of the Mean, is right? Yeah, yeah. Frisian, Latin. Still at that, still, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you have yeah. some. Um, as some of them lads, yeah. You've got taste of music, I oh, see. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, a wide, wide range. One, but that's not bad. Have you got that one for sale? Yeah. That one, that's a good. One. That's that's, uh, uh, that's still for sale. I had that actually in one yard, the same exhibition there a few years ago. Um, What's the story now? That? That's uh, um. Uh, yeah, it's their Durer's hands. It's famous painting. Yeah. Hands and praying hands and all. Everything that was after going on around that time, there's no COVID or pandemic in it at that stage, but there was everything else. There was homelessness and the mental health issues and Catholic, like, Christianophobia, media, and uh, all this. Yeah, it was basically Ireland, like modern Ireland. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Never be put right and all no, that. No, stuff in it, yeah. Um, and that's the cathedral. I was up there today to, taking photos. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in there the other day. There's a lot of nice. Uh, it's a lovely cathedral. Um, it's a brilliant cathedral. Yeah. Murals and things. Uh, yeah, on the, the floor. Work, it's unbelievable. On the floor they have the... Yeah, the tile work is just... Tile work, yeah. It's a work of art in itself, yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, that's yeah. mine. <laughs> Guinness. Yeah. Are you okay. an yourself? No. <laughs> I'm piss artist, man. Right? <laughs> um, uh, just with, with the pro-life, for, before I go back, uh, we finish then. Um, so looking back at it from from the start of twenty twenty one, how do you feel about the repeal now? Oh, still raging, as much as fire in my belly as ever about it. I don't know how many artworks I've done about it, but a lot. Anyway, it's inspired enough lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Did it? Did it? Did the high sixty eight percent? Did that surprise you? Um, it did uh, actually, because around the doors they were selling the pro life crowds a different story altogether. So. Yeah. It's it's just one of those things. Yeah, I wonder was there a little bit of a fix in that. You'd because have to wonder that too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know people would think that you're you're crazy for doing I'm that. Home to vote, this whole home. Yeah. To vote well, the thing, yeah. you have to think like a little bit logically that the cr- the crowds that the pro life got were massive, mm. really, really That's massive right, course, numbers, yeah, and then yeah. like it was, I was. I was up at all then. Yeah. And uh, there was a few 
But if RT News had show us, then the dollar was put down our numbers by a yeah. few thousand. No, it was 80,000 or something. five people on the street shouting at us, they'd show them as well. Yeah. They'd give as much time to them. And there was a counter demonstration too, and they'd give as much time yeah. to them as the 100,000. It was kind of like what you see in, with Trump rallies and Biden and... and yeah, ignore Trump's big rallies and then just show yeah, them up to us. Or, um, Clinton as well. For him not having a crowd, even yeah. though we're in cars. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't just. But then you had that's one thing that the, it just looked. The numbers looked big mm. for pro life on the streets on the that's ground right, yeah, yeah. and on the doors. Yeah. yeah, they were telling them on the doors they were going. I still think it would have been lost, but sixty eight percent. I think they wanted Crazy, to stick yeah. the knife in. Crazy stuff. Because you know, like the voting cards. I mean, loads mm. of people got double voting cards. That's right. Of you course, know? yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, they grand. to vote and, and, and I've seen in Canada they were paying people to come home from Canada. yeah yeah that whole come home to vote and so students would have yeah, had paying, two, them, paying them to come home students would have had two yeah they would have had right. one in their home and one in their college address that's right yeah, yeah. you know I mean it might uh, I'm sure uh, they wouldn't do anything like that well you know um, <laughs> of course they wouldn't well, every, so the, every election so is kind of... The Pope was coming to Ireland, they went and booked loads of... Uh, and then, you know, just to take them off. I, was, I don't think there would have been a big number anyway with that Pope, maybe. Was, but that's what they're doing. <laughs> they, had a campaign on, they came on a campaign on Facebook and... Uh, yeah. So, um, do you think that abortion the abortion thing is now closed, at least for the immediate future now? It's, well, we have to, we'll never stop fighting it anyway, because yeah. uh, they didn't stop fighting it in 83, and uh, it's turning anyway, definitely turning. Well, how can we turn the tide then? Well, America's after closing down loads of abortion clinics. This is after, uh, in 1967, the, or no, sorry, 1973 in America, uh, it was legalised, and they're still closing down abortion yeah. clinics, and still fighting it. And pro-life is getting bigger and bigger every year. The well, amount of life is massive over there. Well, Steve Turley, you know Steve Turley, he does be on YouTube, he makes a good point, and it's kind of logical when you think about that. The left kind of, with abortion, it's most, they kind of kill themselves, really. And mm -hmm. any pro-lifers and you know conservative people they're kind of breeding <laughs> yeah, exactly. so they kind of yeah, spread yeah. themselves out a little bit exactly. oh, yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you're seeing in it america really funny yesterday because uh, the journal journal who are is just oh, so, I wouldn't biased. Read it. so biased <laughs> no neither do i i won't even click on that but there was a poll so i clicked on it anyway but the thought they were great to put up this uh, poll about uh, should we banish angeles and the lost out badly yeah i think it was 60 something yeah. percent said we shouldn't i shouldn't get rid of it well my opinion of that would be like it's just tradition you yeah. know, whatever, even if it was mm. not even, it's yeah. just something yeah. that's been there and why change it, it? It's gone so secular now, it's not nearly religious anymore. Yeah. So, so why you just take it off just to please them? Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, it's just something that's been there forever. What do you think of Into and... Um, yeah, interesting now, all right. Yeah, it's good to see somebody. Yeah, Tobin is a good man, and definitely. Yeah. yeah, he's decent. So he's, is his sister. And oh, yeah, definitely. There's good people in it, but is it just... Uh, Pro life Sinn Fein. <laughs> that's what some people say, right? Yeah, that's what some say, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, well, at, at least he's not towing the line and exactly, not yeah. just his other things as well. I think he's mm. he's come out against recently, but um, pro life, the pro life do push others, like they can talk about adoption, they give women other alternatives, which is good. Mm, all to do is you know, unbelievable. People just don't realize the half of the things they do. Like, there's Bernadette uh, Smith now in uh, up in the north, yeah, she's very good. She's brilliant, yeah, she's a great I've woman. I've shook hands with her and Neve Neve Reed. She's always, yeah, she's she's, 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 she's very impressive too, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it's 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 really there should be a, like the the media are, are terrible that they, they think that a, a, a young woman maybe sixteen, seventeen, eighteen have a kid and that's the end of their life. Whereas I would think it, you know, you've been given the opportunity to have a beautiful child at that that's age, right, and yeah, it's it's yeah. just that you you've had it at seventeen. Other people have it at twenty, at twenty nine, thirty, forty. You know, it's a precious. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah. And some people, I, some people uh, pull it off, and then they can't have any. Exactly. Yeah. They just presume oil. Oh, I'll always be able to have a baby. Well, that's yeah. like for me and my wife. We put it off for a long time. Okay, we have two kids now, but yeah. it's like we're in our forties. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been. We were thinking like we should have had them earlier. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> even for your own sake. Yeah. Even but for, you know, even for sleep sake, when you when you were young, you could. <laughs> But that that it's it's there's people they don't have this argument they don't it's just oh my god it's terrible her life is ruined mm -hmm. it's like but her life is only beginning really it's one yeah. process that then they don't think about uh, the damage it could cause mentally after doing that yeah regret maybe in that sort of yeah. yeah but uh let me see I have just one one more question then yeah, yeah. um the the Pope um 
you're obviously a very religious person. What what do you think, the Pope? Mm, no comment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just like he was. He was. He's. Yeah. He, I think he's a bit of a charlatan, to be honest, because. Yeah, yeah. Um, you seen him with the abortion referendum in Ireland. He didn't. He didn't really he reach got, out as much as he no, could. He could. Yeah. He, and even he got, in his own country. He the word, yeah. Even in his own country, mm. Argentina voted recently uh, for right. abortion, That's and he he was true. sending tweets off about Trump or something. Yeah, of course. It was. You know, I <laughs> shouldn't even. You should stay away from Trump altogether. You should stay out of uh, politics and that. And the, the whole most ninety nine percent of what people know about Trump is lies from the media, spin, and everything else. Yeah. But so what? What do you think then of uh, the the Pope Francis? I mean, mm. he does sometimes put out. I think the less things. said the better. Very little now. He said, he did say uh, getting an abortion is like hiring a hitman, which is right about that. But then they didn't uh, pick up on that very well. Yeah, the media didn't. Uh, but he invited an awful lot of pro-abortion people to the oh, yeah. the Vatican, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sure Biden too. I'm, I'm sure you congratulate Biden now and him supporting abortion up to Yeah. Government. Well, it's always um. Yeah. It's always very noticeable about when politicians wear their religion on their sleeve, you know, and yeah. it's it's kind of more or less saying they're not religious. And you know, too, yeah. Of it's like a, I I personally think religion is is a personal thing that it's mm. in, you, you know. Well, then, uh, what was who was it said? Um, a heron was a German. A heron said that uh, he leaves his religion outside his uh, outside the door when he's uh, been a minister, but. Uh, yeah, but that's you still have um, natural <laughs> law yeah, and you still have morality and morality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was one of but what draw. Dra- we see the natural law is uh, it's a funny one because you could bend that to any way you think. Like, you know, I mean, you could you could justify nearly anything. Ah, uh, but I think there's an inherent goodness and inherent badness that most people f- figure well, out. It's kind of yin and yang, and I think there's about the same amount in everybody really, and it depends which side that comes out of stronger. Yeah. Which side wins? Well, I said it's probably half and half in every single person. Yeah, as, as Jordan Peterson said, I was like, and he's right. Like everyone thinks, oh, I'm such a good person. I wouldn't have done what them German people did during the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. wouldn't have done that. And he says, how do you know you wouldn't have done it? You're probably doing worse. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they they didn't know what they were doing wrong. Some Irish people were voted for abortion and uh, for care and compassion. Yeah. So that's just uh, bizarre. Yeah. Well, that's a good pun. Yeah. Um. That's what they're doing the right thing, but uh, good intentions. And the was to say about good intentions. The road to hell is paved with. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> very good. That's that's well answered. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, no. Sure, yeah, yes, yes, we can have a <laughs> Yeah. 